Nigeria has embarked on reforms that will transform the leadership in the country for a more sustainable economy. It has also continued a fight against the heightened level of corruption that is plaguing the system. Now, how do we assess leadership in Nigeria? CNBC Africa's Umu Ibrahim spoke to Nicolas Okoye, the CEO of Annabel Group, to get more on the needed reforms in Nigeria's leadership structure. A lot of uh, folks seem to say that the, there's a leadership crisis in Nigeria, you know, but a lot of the attention has been directed at the folks with the titles, the folks in established leadership, the leaders of government, the leaders of our corporations. But in my opinion, and in the opinion of the Annabelle Leadership Academy, we believe leadership is for everybody. So there's a lot of problem with the followership as well. You know, in my opinion, leadership amounts to influence. Once you are influencing people, once you have somebody that looks up to you, once you're a role model, you know, you are a leader. Now, the challenge for Nigeria is that the Nigerian population do not realize that they're all involved in the Nigerian experiment. We're all participating in nation building. And so, yes, we do have a leadership crisis at the top. We do have a leadership crisis with the folks in charge of the government institutions, but we also have a crisis with the population. A lot of our people don't realize their responsibilities. So we believe, and that's what we've been trying to do with the Leadership Academy, is to get the Nigerian people to understand that they have a role to play in nation building. They have a responsibility to this nation. You are focused on developing leadership in Nigeria. Now, just how much of an influence do you have and how far have you gone? Well, as you know, we, we had a, a large conference which we organized last year, which is the Nigeria Leadership Summit. It was, you know, built by the press, including some of your organizations, to be one of the most successful leadership summits in Nigerian history. We had over 3,000 delegates showed up, and these are mostly young people from all over the country you know, came to that particular event. Why? Because they are yearning for a new direction. So the Annabelle Leadership Academy has charged ahead in this respect. But in, 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 in an effort to take it to the next level, we also launched another platform, what we call the Empower Nigeria. We're going around the country to all the six geopolitical zones to engage the youths, those who cannot afford to travel to Lagos or to Abuja for the main events. We are going to them. Now, what we are doing is that we're motivating them, we're telling them, listen, we know the number one problem in Nigeria is jobs. We know that there is an unemployment crisis. According to the National Institute, uh, Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria has 24% unemployment. That is a whooping 41 million Nigerian young people out of work. Now, that means that if we don't get the unemployment crisis tackled, then we can't be talking about leadership at all. So what we are doing is that we're saying, okay, what is the solution? The solution is not with getting people to go into the big major corporations. Those major corporations don't create jobs. The jobs are created by the small and medium scale enterprises, by self-employment. So we're giving the young people, the youths, opportunities to get self-employed. Why the youth? Well, the youth, you know the Nigerian population is about 70% under the age of 35. 70% of our population is under 35. What does that mean? That means clearly this is a young population. The Nigerian young people make up this country. And our political leaders have not yet figured this out. Because if those young people do get registered and decide to vote, they can vote out anybody from office. Or they can vote in anybody they choose to, to, to lead them into office. Just based on their numbers. They are more in number than every other demographic in this country. In any case, the country belongs to them. So what we, we don't want an angry youth population because they're angry. But in my opinion, it's not really the fault of the government because we have a large population and large companies, as I said, do not create employment. So the problem is what are the initiatives that the, 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 the leadership, the political leadership is proposing in order to help the young people? I believe it's entrepreneurship. That is the key. We need to get these people engaged. Let them set up their own jobs. Let them set up their own self-employment initiatives. And there's so many aspects of the Nigerian economy that are growing. 
you know, the telecommunications industry is growing. Information technology is growing. Hospitality and tourism is growing. These are places where we can engage young people. They can set up small businesses. We've seen how good leadership has transformed the growth and leadership of Nigeria's telecom sector. Now, how do you think Nigeria can replicate this in all the crucial sectors, particularly the alien power sector? Uh, exactly. I mean, the telecommunications, I remember when I used to work at the Nigerian Stock Exchange and we used to take you know, investors around the world to convince you know, foreign investors to come and invest in Nigeria, invest in our capital market, invest in our industries. The telecommunications sector was one area where we used to be so proud and we beat our chest and that the, every single investment analyst around the world knows the success story of the telecommunications revolution in Nigeria. You know, some of the analysts we spoke to, you know, uh, especially for uh, Econet that had come in, they were one of the first to come in, Econet and MTN, and they said that they were predicting about 100,000, you know, subscribers over three years, you know, and then what happened? They got two to three million over three years, and now they're looking at 20 million, 30 million people, you know, so it was, a, it was an incredible revolution, and yes, it was a result of good leadership. You know, the leadership was exact, they set their goals, they met their targets, and they were committed. I believe we can do this in the power industry as well. I believe that we're just beginning to get this industry privatized. Unfortunately, a lot of the folks in labor did not understand that when you privatize an industry, when you allow uh, market forces to come in, it actually opens up opportunities. It doesn't squeeze opportunities. So rather than fighting for the labor rights and for people to, re to retain the status quo, no. Allow the thing to expand. It is those same people that will move into the private companies. They will take over the, and they will train more young people. We're going to be creating jobs. We're going to be creating opportunities. Jobs across the board will be available in the power industry once we get it right. And I think we're well on our way to getting it right. Now, just a final one. What drives, you know, the motivation behind your leadership initiative? Well, as I said, you know, we are, we're, we're, we're definitely committed to building a new Nigeria. I, I sleep and wake up the Nigerian experience. My motivation comes from the fact that I see the potentials in this country. I know what can be achieved with the right people at the helm of affairs. And I know how to get the right people at the helm of affairs. The key is the Nigerian youth population. And I don't think the political leaders have understood this strategy yet. And so we are galvanizing them, we're mobilizing them. And when the time comes, we will come to the political leadership and say, listen, these young people need a change. This is what you want and this is what we want and this is the kind of leadership we deserve in order to create opportunities for our people.